to Paradise. Before we begin, we'd like to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your console space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner of the slide area. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the help link located via the question mark widget at the bottom left of your screen where you will find details about system requirements and frequently asked questions. If you experience a blank screen during the webcast, please try refreshing your browser or pressing F5. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can submit them to the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast, but if a more complete answer is needed or if we run out of time, we will reach out directly. Also, notice the Learn More widget. Here, we've added links to a recently published blog that correlates with today's presentation, a link to our throughput manager webpage, and a copy of today's slide presentation. In addition, we've also included a link to the next webcast in our Did You Know series on November 15th, Deep Dive Topaz for Enterprise Data. Learn how you can use CompuWare Topaz for enterprise data to generate and properly map test data, ensuring compliance with privacy laws while preserving data relationships. We also encourage everyone to fill out our survey before the end of today's presentation, and by submitting your response, you will automatically be entered to win a $50 American Express gift card. There's going to be three lucky winners, so please make sure you participate. We are extremely pleased to have as our speakers today CompuWare Account Consultant George Romney and Solution Consultant Kelly Vogt. With that, I'd now like to welcome and hand things over to George. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, George Romney. I'm an account consultant with CompuWare. I've been with CompuWare about 20 years. And uh, when we were selecting a topic for today's uh, uh, webinar, we thought we'd uh, go with Throughput Manager. It's kind of a new tool to CompuWare, and we thought that uh, so a lot of our customers would be uh, interested in finding a little bit more about Throughput. So uh, today we have, a, we have an agenda that starts with answering several questions about Throughput what problems it addresses, how it works, and so forth. And I have with me Kelly, uh, who will introduce himself a little bit later. Uh, but Kelly's been with CompuWare about, uh, for just a short time, but he has 20 years' experience as a throughput uh, user. And uh, he'll go through about uh, how throughput works, and he'll also go through some customer success stories uh, and give you an idea of, of how it helps some of our customers. So with that, We'll get started, and the first question we'll ask is, what are the problems that throughput addresses? Uh, when we talk about the problems that throughput addresses, well, really, throughput works in batch uh, and in batch workloads. And uh, you, you might recall a few years ago, people were talking about the death of batch. Um, and as it turns out, batch is not dead yet. Uh, it continues to thrive about 20% uh, uh, 20 to 50 percent of all workload on ZOS is batch. Uh, many of our customers are, are running 100 to 250 thousand plus jobs a day, uh, so it's not gone away. What we're seeing is that uh, with the drive for online and with uh, digital transformations opening up transactions to the web, we're actually seeing a growth in batch transactions. Um, and we're seeing, uh, but at the same time, we're seeing the batch windows shrinking. So uh, more transactions, less time to less time to uh, to do them. And that's where the throughput steps in. So the first problem that we see is with customers losing experienced people. Now this is true for uh, for all ZOS uh, disciplines, but especially in batch. When you talk about batch operations, you're talking about people that are highly technical and highly competent. Um, a lot of times they're dealing in nuanced environments uh, with different layers of complexity and uh, knowledge that's been built up over years and years and years on how to manage their specific environments. So the question that our customers are asking is, is how can they capture this knowledge and how can they, how can they uh, minimize the risk when it comes to losing these people um, who are retiring it or, or otherwise? The second problem that uh, uh, that we encounter is uh, that batch 
environments require lots of manual uh, intervention. We have one customer, we just did a study uh, on, on how they use batch and we found out that they have 47,000 different commands issued each year or each month in their batch environment. So that's 47,000 opportunities for a manual error. Um, and anyone that's been up at 2 a.m. in the morning to, to fix a batch window knows about errors. Um, uh, in the in the IBM, when IBM gives you your, your batch environment, usually it's, it's, it's empty, so you have to build it yourself. Uh, and most batch environments are, uh, require lots of manual inputs. So question three, or problem three, uh, deals with the cost. So there's obviously a cost uh, to deal with personnel. Uh, there's also costs associated with with uh, with the with the CPU consumption and so forth. It requires resources to run. And a lot of times, batch environments are not set up efficiently or or optimized. Most of the time, people are just concerned about getting the batch runs done uh, rather than than getting them optimized, especially in a manual environment. So we, we tend to see peaks and valleys, um, inefficient utilization of resources, uh, which tend to drive costs up. And uh, so how can Throughput Manager help? Well, the first thing that Throughput Manager can do is, is uh, help automate the batch process. And by, by automating the batch process, you can reduce the reliance on, on, um, on on manual inputs, uh, reducing the amount of errors that, that you might have. It also helps to capture that knowledge from, the, from your workforce that may be retiring and, and help to uh, codify it so that, uh, so that you can continue to run uh, and rely less on, on personnel. Uh, second thing it does is it increases the throughput. So, um, Obviously, uh, S uh, batch windows need to be completed on time. There's all sorts of SLAs that, that you need to worry about. Sometimes SLAs incur penalties uh, when SLAs are not met. Sometimes it disrupts business operations. Um, also, by increasing throughput, you can, you can reduce the resources you need, not just the amount of time it takes to complete your batch window, but the, amount, but the total amount of CPU cycles that you need to do so. Uh, and this will make your business happy. Third thing we can do is help manage the MSU demands. We talked a little bit about flattening out those peaks and valleys. Uh, this will have a direct impact on things like your four hour rolling average um, and, and, uh, and help save costs in, in that way. Uh, also, um, by, uh, by, by doing so, you'll, you'll uh, you just make things run a lot smoother. And the last thing we can help you do is defer an upgrade. So obviously, if you can defer an upgrade, you can save millions of dollars uh, in your current uh, budget cycles by, by, by slowing things down. Typically, what we see is that uh, in a, in the, the batch environment still dictates when you do your upgrades. It's, when you're running your batch, typically, there are some onlines that are still on. So that's typically your highest CPU utilization time is when you're running your batch. So if you can, if you can uh, lower the, the resources that you need to run your batch, you can uh, oftentimes defer an upgrade. So who needs Throughput Manager? Well, basically anyone who's running batch, um, especially if you have a digital or, or, a, or a mobile uh, project going on, um, people who are doing Agile or DevOps um, can benefit as well. People that are having problems maintaining their, their, their skills through retiring workforce or, or otherwise, and anywhere where automation is, is the goal. So who is using throughput? Well, it's kind of interesting. We did a, we did a quick study and we found that um, if you take 5,000 MIPS as, as the over-under, about half our throughput customers are running over 5,000 MIPS and half are running under 5,000 MIPS. And so what this tells us is, is that cost savings are important. You know, obviously if you have uh, a large environment, you can save a lot more money by optimizing resources. But, the, but because a lot of people are, who are relatively small, 
are running throughput, it tells us that the, that the, uh, the automation portion of it is equally as important, if not more. So uh, we have companies, big and small, uh, pretty much every vertical, banking, retail, government, healthcare, insurance, uh, they're all using uh, throughput. So what does Throughput Manager do? Well, uh, I'm going to pass the torch over to Kelly to vote. Uh, Kelly can in introduce himself and uh, uh, take it from there. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Kelly Vogt. Uh, I was like you, a customer, for uh, 38 years before joining uh, CompuWare in February. Um, uh, during that time, I was systems programmer, performance management, and management roles. Uh, left Humana after 23 years there in the operations area. So what does Throughput Manager do? Uh, we manage your batch with our rules-based policy-driven control system. That's, that's what we do. Throughput Manager is not a tool. It's a subsystem of ZOS. It works with JES2, WM, and other system components to bring automation to batch processing. Almost everyone has a job scheduler. It knows the date and time the job must be submitted, when it must be finished, and the prerequisites. But, but then what happens? The job goes on the queue, and it waits for the next open initiator with its job class. There's a large gap in the management of the job. The gap is filled by human effort by the operator. So if we were to automate this, how would it work? Hopefully the animation will keep up with the dialogue here. A job from any source enters the system. It's immediately analyzed. Every JCL parameter, every data set, every volume and device needed is known to throughput manager. Using our job analysis language, your installation can make decisions about each job. Does it meet your job standards? Must the job be canceled or Better, can it be repaired so it can run? Does it need a database or specific software? We can ensure it runs where and when the needed resources are active. How will it be managed by automation? Is it important? Is it discretionary? When the job is put on the queue, waiting, then the job will be put on the queue, awaiting managed execution. Meanwhile, the job is set up to run. Migrated data sets are recalled. Archived virtual volumes are staged. Data set contention is resolved before it happens. All this occurs before initiation, so that when the job executes, it will run without delays. At the same time, the job queue is reviewed and reordered to ensure that the most urgent job is the next to execute. Finally, the job is initiated. Our service level manager, SLM, takes great care to ensure proper initiation of your system, preventing over-initiation and under-initiation, ensuring jobs run as quickly as possible and avoiding wasting CPU. We make sure you get every bit of juice out of your system. After execution, the job moves to the output queue. So let's talk a bit about over-initiation. What is it? Over-initiation is just like it sounds. Too many jobs vying for the CPU and not getting good service. Think overbooking like the airline. We, conduct a control, we conducted a controlled experiment comparing WLM-controlled initiators to throughput manager service level initiators. We ran identical workloads, a variety of job types, real work on the same otherwise empty system. WLM first, then SLM, a thousand jobs in each test. Here you can see the difference in behavior and the results. The purple line, WLM quickly ramped up, up to 300 initiators, clearly overwhelming our system with current concurrent work. The blue line, throughput manager used about 25 initiators instead. 
he is constantly aware of the load batch is putting on the system. The green line shows the number of jobs throughput manager completed ahead of WLM. So now the results. Throughput manager finished about an hour ahead of WLM. Imagine the CPU wasted in system overhead during this over initiation period. I'd like to talk a bit about capping methodology. Why does your capping method matter? Isn't capping the tool that IBM gave us to control our cost? Well, it does matter, and there's very good reasons why. If you're capping to contain costs now, this graph should look familiar. The red line is your cap. The blue line is your rolling four-hour average. When the blue line crosses the red line, the system begins to throttle your MSUs per hour. This is when trouble can start. Capping affects all running workloads to varying degrees. PRISM and WLM begin time slicing the CPU to get rolling four-hour average in line with the cap value. Every address space gets at least a little CPU time to prevent locking problems. Your high-priority workloads, and that's not batch usually, generally suffer the least. But if you have an app that only runs well when it gets all the CPU at once, you will have problems, like chatty front-end servers who peck your mainframe to death for each business transaction. A better way to get the same result is with demand management. The rolling four-hour average is a trailing indicator, a value comprised from the last four hours. Why not be smart and manage your batch so that you soft land just under your target MSUs per hour instead of capping? This way, you experience no CPU throttling, and your running batch continues to run at machine speed. Here I can show you how automated capacity management, or ACM, lowers rolling for our rolling average. Without ACM, all workloads contribute to your peak, to your MLC cost, regardless of their importance. With ACM, batch demand of the CPU is managed by business priority. Less important work is deferred to be run later. Not every job is worth paying more MLC to run. You have to ask yourself that in your installation. The more you can flatten your rolling four-hour average across the month, the more you save. ACM, ACM ensures your low-priority workloads do not add unnecessary costs to your MLC bill. This is how we enable you to contain cost without impacting service. We bring balance to these two opposing objectives. Service level manager automates your batch management, like a super operator doing all the things he would do if he could every 10 seconds. While ACM guides SLM to get you the results you want for your cost containment goals. So how will ops observe how automated batch is working? A dashboard. Our automation is working in real time, so you should see what is happening in real time. Our new web-based interface shows you status up to the second. Here you can see at a glance how initiation goals are being met at target, acceptable, and critical thresholds. No more scrolling up and down queues and SDSF trying to determine where you stand with meeting service levels. You can see from across the room whether any attention is needed. And we take this view further down to the job level. Here you can see an individual job status. If there's a delay, you can see why. We use red, yellow, green to show it a, at a glance what the status is. And you can drill down into the job for additional detail. Job detail is customizable to display site-specific information, like 
perhaps the username and phone number, scheduler attributes, whatever information you wish to include to aid your operators in their, in their work. And if you're using our automated capacity management, you can observe and, and track your, roll your rolling 4-hour average data. We fully support both advanced workload license charges and country multiplex pricing. We're working to expand this interface to enable you to manage your batch environment with minimal need for a green screen. And we invite customers to help guide us in development of this interface. So let's see what some of our customers have to say and what their experiences have been. Our first case study is a telecom. It's a very large shop with 28 Jezplexes, 14 mainframes. One Jezplex runs 125,000 jobs a day. So you can imagine automation was a key initiative across their IT. They had a number of challenges, reduction in operational cost, but, but they still needed to maintain their service levels. Elimination of manual effort and retention of tribal knowledge. They got a lot of benefits. They saved millions in annual MLC savings. Uh, savings were from ISV cost using penalty box environments and 90% plus reduction in operator commands. That freed their operators to do other more useful things like serving their customer and reductions in errors. They said, don't hesitate. I wouldn't want to do capping without it. I think that soft hammer approach is really the way to go. Thank you for that for Chris. Our second case study is at the other end of the spectrum, a life insurance company. They're running about 5,000 MIPS, 13,000 jobs per night, and their digital workload was putting really acute pressure on their mainframe. They were challenged with increasing IBM and ISV software costs. They kept going up and, and it was hurting their, their bottom line. Operators were distracted with manual operation and inconsistent service levels. The benefits they cited were a simplified environment providing better service to their customers. They were able to save on their SaaS software by how they coordinate workload off into a penalty box and MLC reduction. They told us the product really does sell itself. Then there's a, a health insurance company that I'm somewhat familiar with. Uh, they were a customer for 22 years, uh, 60,000 MIPS and a very large Jezplex, 45,000 production jobs a day, and production and tests were at that time sharing the same environment. They had, they had challenges from aggressive users seeking advantage through trial and error. People were hogging initiators and other resources. Operators were constantly juggling initiators and job priorities. Their benefits were fair and equitable distribution of resources across all stakeholders of the mainframe. And they really liked being able to adapt their bad strategy with ease when problems arose. They could finally end the constant manipulation of batch. They said they regained control allowing operations to run batch rather than being run over by batch. And our last case study was a global bank. Over 300,000 MIPS with 10 mainframes, 36 LPARs and eight JESPLEXs. A very complex environment, a lot of critical batch. Lots of operators juggling jobs and very tight schedules. Their challenge was retirements. They had a whole new team, and they were also charged at the same time with automating whenever possible. So they benefited from operator juggling of jobs has now been minimized. Automation does all of that for them now. 
and their date to set contention, contention delays were also minimized. They gave us several pearls of wisdom, but I particularly like the last one. People coded batch jobs fairly stupidly, and for that reason, we needed throughput manager. So you can see that automation is its own reward. Throughput's improved, initiator residency time is minimized, near zero idle time when initiated. Your policy ensures business goals drive batch execution. I can't emphasize that enough. Your business goals drive your batch execution. You can get MLC savings without the risks of capping. Risk from retirement is mitigated. Your local best practices coded in rules-based policy-driven control system. It just works, someone told me. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for, uh, for going through that for us. Uh, remember, there is a survey uh, for folks that want to uh, uh, get a chance to win $50. And we also have time for uh, additional questions. We do have some questions that have been asked that we're going to get to in just a second. If you do want to submit a question, there's still time. So go ahead and, and, and do that. So uh, the first question that we have is, uh, Kelly, what is the difference between throughput manager and WLM? So WLM is uh, the ZOS uh, policy-driven uh, dispatcher control system. Uh, Throughput Manager uses WLM and works in concert with it and really adds uh, another layer of function uh, for control of your batch workload uh, using WLM. So they work together in concert and they're not opposed. Okay. Uh, the next question is, when you were in operations, what was the primary reason your company looked at throughput? Uh, I think you might have picked me out there in the, in the case studies. So uh, we did not have uh, a lot of JES2 exit writing capability to put our own controls in the system. We really needed something uh, that we could code and easily and, and manage the workload. And we found this incredible tool called Throughput Manager. And we implemented that and solved all the problems we had. And then we worked with uh, the vendor over the ensuing years to develop the automation in our shop. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, we, there was some talk about ACM during the presentation. Mm -hmm. And somebody's asked whether ACM is part of base uh, throughput manager. Well, uh, with Throughput Manager comes in the automated edition, which includes service level manager and automated capacity management, or ACM. So the answer is yes. Okay, great. Um, where do you see the industry going five years from now? Will it have continue to have batch, shrinking batch, more batch? I, I don't see batch getting smaller. Uh, you can judge for yourself in your own shop. If your batch has grown over the years, I expect You've lost some, but you've also gained some. It's certainly gotten more complex. It's, it's no less important than it ever was in most shops. So yeah, you, given the loss of expertise that's coming with retirements, you really need to prepare your company for that by automating your batch and codifying all your local rules uh, into automation. There's uh, one last question here, and it's, but it's not for you, Kelly. It's for, it's for Janet. And somebody wanted to know how they can get a copy of the presentation. We will be sending out a copy of the presentation along with the slides and additional um, assets that we feel will be beneficial to everyone after uh, the live broadcast. So you should be looking in your inbox between today and tomorrow. So with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their time today, and remember to please fill out that survey because it's very important. Your information, your feedback is very valuable to us. And with that, I hope everyone has a great day, and we hope to see you in our next webcast 
in November. Have a great day, everyone.